I'm a slave of Christ is what we're going to look at this morning. And uh, one of the other things that I want us to look at is um, how do we overcome addictions? How do we overcome addictions and be able to um, be slaves of Christ? Because in the life where we live, um, you have so many things that have enslaved us and we actually uh, 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 succumb to the same. Somebody by the name Vince Lombardi spoke some words which have added more and people have been able to, him he talked about your action becomes habits and your habit becomes words. But somebody has said, watch your thoughts, what you think daily, because um, they become words, you know. You know, sometimes you can think until your thoughts become words. And your words, if you speak them repeatedly, they become your actions. They become who you are, okay? And then your action can actually become your habits. So you become a habitual out of your actions. And your habits can actually become your character. And your character can actually be our personality. So that when you meet somebody, you say, there is the drunkard. There is the cheater. There is so and so. So watch your thoughts, lest they become words. Watch your words, lest they become your actions. Watch your actions, lest they become your habits. Watch your habits, lest they become your character. Watch your character, lest they become your personality. We are products of our choices. Some of the slavery and addiction we encounter are a result of our choices and makings. We actually have our children who at one point in their exploration just attempted to smoke for a day and now they are smokers. Somebody decided just to um, do a certain thing and they become. So we choose our slavery. In this particular morning, I will be speaking about two slaveries or maybe three um, choose the slavery of Christ or choose your own slavery of sin or your own self-entitlement. A slave, in the definition, is a person who is forced to work for and obey another and is considered to be their property. That is an enslaved person. You, you become a property for somebody um, of something. So you, you are no longer yourself. I met another drunkard. He says, I don't go drinking. I only find my legs walking into the bar. So drunkards don't go drinking. Their legs, when they, they say, when I close my eyes, I always just found myself seated in a bar. <laughs> and it was very interesting. Because actually, when even a drunkard is very drunk, they don't get lost home. And they don't get lost from where they drank again. They are no longer themselves. <laughs> oh, something that we cannot love. We can also be slaves of God that we find our legs bringing us here. When we, we can also be our sla own slaves on our own. Or we can be slaves of sin. This morning, I want to speak about slavery, looking at addiction, alleg allegorical to slavery. There are many conceptions, misconceptions about addiction. One is that addiction centers on individuals' moral failing or weakness of will. It's a misconception. For many that have actually children who are drunkards or else have lost their way in behavioral uh, addictions, we cannot fail them because of morality. This is a misconception that how comes Oh, so and so you did this is a misconception. It is also a misconception to think that addiction is only about drugs and alcohol. Again, it's a misconception that addiction are easy to identify, that I can see you and I tell you, are you addicted to this or you're addicted to this. I will be telling you some few things and you know. There's also a misconception that if you can work, you are really not addicted. 
That's why some people actually they are taken to the rehab and they are taken. Actually, the other uh, misconception is that actually that you should rehabilitate people or then that they will be able to come out from that. While that is part of the solution, that is the, or not only the solution. The misconception also that there is nothing us as friends, and that's why I'm preaching to us, as family of God and the family of an individual can do to help any person that is addicted. I want somebody to help me. You can sit somewhere. Um, the security people can help me so that we can have time. And if you need something, he will be helped in Jesus' name. So don't be diverted. Yeah. So there is something we can do. Some of us believe that as friends, we cannot do anything. When somebody is addicted, they say, my baby, I'm In fact, some people even take to the mortuary. One of my uncle was a very drunkard. And we ask ourselves, I say, wait until he's, say, take, away, take him away. Somebody, we put him in the mortuary, he wakes up in the morning, he will never go. They say, who would do that? And if he discovers it's you, what would that be? It's a misconception that when somebody is addicted, then as friends, we must move away from them. The other misconception that many of us would actually put to me and us church leaders is that only church counseling can solve addiction. We have done all we can. Just a pastor, it's a misconception. We can do it together. That is what I'm saying in Jesus' name. So what is addiction? Addiction is defined as a chronic collapsing brain disease that is characterized by compulsive drug seeking and use and uh, despiteful, harmful consequences. And it goes even to the, uh, the, 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 the brain being affected by your own behavior and all that. There are two different kinds of addictions that I want to mention and this will shock you. That is what the media content say. This will shock you. We have process or what we call behavioral addiction and we have substance or what we call drug use. I have not used the word drug abuse now that I was a teacher. I'm not actually an expert in this. I attempted to do it because as a pastor, I also know what all people are suffering. In process of behavioral addictions, we have digital or internet. I know some of you, if the internet went out, and some of you have it in the house, you will see how the children are going to be. We are addicted to the internet. We are addicted to pornography and masturbation. This is not for you. I was just feeling that I would talk to you. So none of you are addicted to these things. Buenas for son. There are people who are addicted to sex. Although sometimes people ask, is it food? To others, they are addicted to sex. There are many people who are addicted to gambling. They lose money, they go back there. There are people, and many young people actually, who are addicted to gaming. There are people who are addicted to shopping. I told you this will shock you. You just find yourself carrying a carrier bag. <laughs> this one is very interesting. That's why I say some of you abuse others. I am speaking to you. You are addicted to shopping. Oh my goodness. Now this is one also will shock you. You are addicted to hoarding. Atakalamu una feature. Say my individual and I say una feature. You are very addicted to this. This one is also an addiction. Eating order. There are some of us who eat and they don't even get satisfied. They eat until they get tired and they wake up again. This is an addiction. They are addicted to food. When fasting is coming in January, some of you are wondering, ah, your food. You remember when the first was said, will that make you satisfied? By the way, I didn't mention, we are also taking our children for Hope's Camp now that they are not here. Part of the thing we do with them is prayer and fasting for a day. And you need to register if you, are, if you have a candidate in class 8. So we give them an apple 
as a way of overcoming the temptation. You must stay with an apple 24 hours without eating and bring it back. So in the last two camps that I visited with my children, one brought me a half an apple. <laughs> you know what happened to the other half. The other one was not able to produce the apple. We are addicted to food. And I can tell you in 24 hours, if you eat a half an apple, you have not helped the stomach. In fact, an apple is not an energy-giving food. But our children believe that I must eat something for me today. It's eating disorder. And it can also just be the mannerism in eating. That people want to attack food very fast. Some of us want to attack it with this. That is an addiction. On substance, this is very common. We have talk of alcohol. We have nicotine, that is tobacco. Caffeine, the men of us who are tea lovers, we take love tea, but some of us without tea, you feel dizzy. You are addicted. You feel like you are not in your place. We have marijuana, prescription drugs. There are some of the drugs which are prescribed for us, and this can also be addictive to us. Cocaine, for men of us who take um, uh, cocaine, heroin, benzos, inhalants, and all that. That aside, we pray that God will help us. Some would say that people take drugs because of emptiness in their lives. However, once they take them, wherever they are used to be a problem, now there are two problems. Same emptiness plus another. And let me tell us, for many of us who are here, addiction, particularly drugs, is a runaway behavior. It is something that somebody is trying to hide something and I pray that God will help us to overcome that in Jesus' name. Addiction is a viral tyrant that enslaves and eventually destroys everything you love and value. A man that actually enters certain uh, addiction, be it process or substance, they lose I have even seen people who can't eat I have some of my friends who are uncles, when they visit me, you give them tea. They can't take tea. They cannot take you guys. They say, bring the other thing fast, <laughs> you know. For them, they lose that. They lose interest of a business. They lose interest of a work. They lose interest of a family. And so, even the process. This is a sad story that one man of God, maybe was not a pastor, but I was reading, and this was addicted to pornography. So he had a library in his house. And so when he gets home, he goes reading. So he has lost interest. And he reads until 12 p.m., 12 a.m. in the midnight. And you know, your wife is waiting that you come and pray that they sleep. And he does that daily. So one day when the wife went downstairs, he realized the man does not read, but is watching something downstairs. He has actually developed an addiction that has taken him away even from the wife, it has taken him away from the children. It is a viral tyrant. Romans chapter 6 verse 16 says, Do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either sin which leads to death or obedience which leads to righteousness. You can overcome this and become a slave of Christ. The second last thing I want to say before I give you some prescription for the next 21 days is that addiction magnifies uh, self-centeredness. You think about yourself. How do I excite my body? How do I excite myself above other people and God? To be helped, one must decide to put away what causes addiction, even if it means in small steps. In fact, that's why I'm telling you, if you actually get born again and you're struggling in addiction, the psychologists say that if you attempt new habits for about 21 days consistently, then you develop a habit and you'll be able to overcome. And so you can put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of this, the wrath of God is coming. In these two, once walked when you are living in them, but now you must put them away. Colossians chapter 3, verse 8. You can put them away daily. Daily. For 21 days. 
and you try and you try and you try. 21 consistent days, you develop a habit. You will move from being a slave to sin to the slave of Christ. And this Paul says, if you want to be a slave to Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 to 11, which is our main text. I was doing introduction. Now here I am. You can move from addiction and become a slave of Christ and consistently by say, being able to do some few things which I will say after reading this passage. Let's all of us turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, 1 to 11. It's on the screen, but allow me to comment reading. By the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you, I, Paul, who I am timid when face to face with you, but bold towards you when away. I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think that we live by the standards of this world. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. You are judging by appearance. If anyone is confident that they belong to Christ, they should consider again that we belong to Christ just as they do. So even if I boast somewhat freely about the authority the Lord gave us for the building up rather than tearing you down, I will not be ashamed of it. I do not want to seem to be trying to frighten you by my letters. For some, his letters are weighty and forceful, but in person he is unimpressive and is speaking amounts to nothing. Such a people should realize that we are in our letters when we are absent. We will be our actions when we are present. Mark that. We will be our actions when we are present. Let's say a prayer once again. Father, we thank you for the sharing of your word that this will not just be another motivation of speaking. We know that we are hurting as a people. We are hurting as a nation. We are hurting in our families. Where addiction has taken toll order of our lives. And we are disinterested about many things. Even including the things that, we, that you value. Like prayer. Like fellowship. And many other things. I pray as I share your word. That you help us and bless us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Addiction. Being able to become Christ addict is not a good thing. That you love him. The more you love God, the more you put off the other thing. In my, when I was baptized first in the year 20, um, in the year 201, because I got born again in 1999, I was baptized two years ago, two years later. There was a young man, I've given you a story, that belonged to one of our very committed members in church. I used to be in Pefa in Kimbo. And this young man had chosen to smoke all drugs, marijuana and all that. He smoked until it affected his breathing. Because for many of you who have smoked or have friends, you can smoke until now the breathing system is quite affected. And so he was routinely being taken to hostel every moment, once and again, to be treated. But at this one point that this came to our attention for many of us who are members and committed people in the youth fellowship because it came to us through the fellowship, is that this young man now is gone. He can't breathe anymore. And so when he was in that hospital bed, in, um, he admitted, the mother sat on the bed and he started to cry and wail and saying, my son, go. I loved you, but now this thing, I've tried to help you, but it cannot come back. So he was saying a prayer of blessing on the young man because he had given up and he is almost dying. And God did a miracle when the mother was praying. The young man woke up and he realized he had those prayers. And he was saying, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. When the young man woke up, 
and looked at the mother wailing and the prayers the mother was saying. He said, I want to be born again. And when he got born again, he was to go through some gradual. For those who take drugs, by the way, you actually go to rehabilitation. That's how the, the, the psychologists outside there are helpful. This young man said, I want now to go uh, to die on the pulpit. He had been gifted with a voice. He could not sing. As we speak today, that young man, when he chose to sing, he said, now I will die singing. You know, he could struggle to produce sound because the esophagus had been affected. And he continued to sing until he became our worship team leader. Praise the Lord. And he didn't die. As we speak now, he's one of the pastors of Pepper Church. Many of you, if you went to Pepper, you may know him. I will not mention his name because I didn't ask for permission. What I'm saying is, this is a radical way that actually you cannot die when you are a slave of Christ. There are miracles that can happen. And so Paul speaks this letter almost to what I have said. And when you look at it, it talks about all the letters of Paul, uh, the two, particularly 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Speak to us. Many of us want to be servants of God. You must read 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Paul is speaking about how to endure hardship and become an, a good minister of the gospel. Again, it's a backdrop of everything. So it prescribes what we must do as children of God, as believers, to live Christ-like life. He had actually prescribed a doctrine in Romans for many of us who are good readers of the book of Romans. And Paul counts himself as a slave. And as he writes this letter, he actually sees that he himself is not impressive. He's writing very hard things. Like I'm struggling to preach this sermon. And he says, this man, even if we met him in person, is not impressive as his letters. But because he loved the Lord so much, he pens his conviction. And that is what I want us to look at. And the most serious problem of the Corinthian church was wildness, and willingness to divorce the culture around them. We have a lot of wildly life that when we come to Christ, we are still in it. And I'm sorry to speak to this. Many of us, our children will be sitting for exams just in a month. I know one of the things some of us when we were being circumcised. Imagine you see kukwa mukia subul kuna pewa changa. Kuna mutu alikuwa na kuulizango na enda sandes. Kuna ilete watu. It was part of the meal. Na ilikuwa na fanywa na waze. Waze muna nisikia. You do that as a ritual. Musa kijana kawonja hapa. Kwanzia hapo is when actually our young people, after they move from Chandon, they become drunkards. It is in shade that night before. Muna niangale ni kama nyesi wa Kenya. These things you know them. They are given that night. A lot of wildnesses. It is that time now they will tell you now you after umepona. Now women you don't know. This is where they, they told the young people that you can marry. Eh? You can marry. Now nasema sisi ndiyo kusa. Si mchungaji. That day when actually some of you asked me to come for those parties you will be asking. Na ongeanga uko mwisho. Lakini kuna mzea hapo mwenye anazungumuza. Na alizungumuza usiko before. Wildnesses. A lot of wildish things. And then we will struggle with these children. They come back, they can't obey their mother. Now they go there, they change behavior. What they took on the night, just before the circumcision, becomes their own culture of life. No, 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 mama. That's what they say, Pastor. We will end up, hopes come with the reverend, our English. And they need to know that. So they come from there, they become so secretive. When they go to school and they are induced to drugs, they are introduced to homosexuality and less, we don't know. We only come to realize after a long period of time. But it is something that has been induced to them. Paul still writes this letter to us. If we were to fight this thing among our children and be able to overcome the world and the culture around the things the children have been taught. Most of believers could not consistently separate themselves from their old, selfish, immoral, and pagan ways. To be like that brother of mine I told you that he got born again and asked me, I have some piece of spirit here, wine. What do I do with it? So unasoma Biblia, unakunywa kidogo. Unasoma Biblia, unaenda kule kidogo. 
you smoke like this. This one is a dead friend of mine. He used to be coming to church, and he was a very known member. But he used to smoke, but I didn't know. So one day I banged on him smoking. It will always say that I was here. <laughs> Although some of you have found the other smoking one that looks high narrow. There were a lot of pagan ways in the Corinthian church as much as they were this. They were slaves of old practices. They were slaves of their own behavior, thoughts, ideas. In fact, he says that we have come to speak against arguments for men of us. There were many reasonings that men of us have now We'll be talking about postmodern, postmodernity. Or, um, Steve James is going to come as he finishes the university. The reasonings that there is no absolute truth. Truth is relative. That is wrong. Now, the Islam women now have doing a women conference. And um, they are also thinking of certain ways of acceptable behavior. Our long marriages. There are philosophies about what it means to do this and that. There were false teachings. This is the same with us as modern Christians, as modern people. We are addicted to the world. We are addicted to the world. The world has prescribed a standard of how we do things, and we are slaves to them. We have no voice if we were to write. So how do we deal with this? If we do this within 21 days... We will be done. I must be able to finish quickly because of time. Paul says, I am timid. Did you read that with me? Uh, he was humble and gentle attitude. Patient and enduring. No revenge. Men of addiction. For us ladies who are here, men go to drink because we now, it's a revenge mission. I'm preaching to you as your pastor because I counsel you, many of your people. People are running away. So, instead of just humbling and saying, I'm sorry, anakunywa ndi akuja nyumbani. Hata anakuja anapika vitu mateke na ajalewa. It is a revenge mission. It's a revenge on somebody. God, when he's speaking through Paul, he says, I'm timid, but I'm writing this letter to you. I'm timid, and I'm also speaking this to us. That revenge will not solve. In fact, even the people who commit crime, they have found an habit, because that same man cannot just go and anadunga mutukisu. They are under influence of drugs to do that. I pray that we are not going to be on it. It doesn't matter the mistake anyone has done to us. Some of us, our marriages didn't work. So out of that, you think that you are going to take drugs or be in a certain way of suckers to solve that. It won't happen. For many of us who are in marriages, in behavior, now that you want to show him, you know, I was reading another story or the story of a newspaper. That you say your husband and a kusumbua, you naleta mwingin, sakumzima. It's a revenge mission. Now, when Geza wa wili, you are kwanda na nyamaza. Well, you are kwana panya, kusumbua, kusumbua leta wa pila na nyamaza, pila, kusumbua leta wa, paka na leta wa tatu. Revenge. God is asking us to be able to be humble and face the truth. And I prayed, I preach to us um, that we can go and sit and talk. Even our children. Even if they are drunk at so much, let's not show revenge mission on them. And if you are a son here, don't show revenge to your parents just because you're there, you want to show this. If you be humble for 21 days, now, some of us men are only humble for two days. I love to know. 21 days is what I'm prescribing today. It is not in scripture, but I'm adding some psychology. If you do that, humble for 21 days, things are going to work. Say amen. 21 days, humble. No revenge. You will be able to work. The other thing, you must know that the warfare is not carnal fair. It's not a carnal warfare. Verse 3 of that particular passage. And Paul speaks and he says that this thing is not uh, this. I, I also think so. 
Um, now, this is not an example that you should take to your notebooks. But now, the old wazes could take drugs, but vijana hako na kunywa pombe kitambo. Ulikuwa naenda tu wazee wa kisahafu, munaacha wazee. Siku hizi, now, it's like, it's a warfare on our children. Unakuta hata mzee alikuwa na kunywa pombe na anaambia waenda kanisa. Tunampewa mahindi na mayai kama sadaka Sunday tumeenda. He could not take it. But now it is a warfare. It's a warfare on our generation. We don't have a generation young people are taking drugs. So many of us were in school. Had to attend a session on behalf of one of my kin. Nakuta kijana tumelea mzuri. Nisema hata akimaliza shule is doing KCSE atakuja. Hata kijana naona amenyamaza tu. Tunaenda kumuona tunampatia chapati anasema nataka kuenda kuona daktari na mnipatie After two weeks tunaitwa shuleni. Naambia tumemshika na na. Niko na kuambia mama nasikia kulia mimi mwenye nilikuwa nimeenda ku represent baba yake. Huyu kijana yetu. Na huwa anasoma rosari au anaenda wa Catholic. Catholic kuna maombi ambayo ni mazuri. Na maombi nashinda yenu. Ni nini nini amwezi sema the Lord's prayer. <laughs> Catholic can say all of it. This young man can say all those prayers. We have wasted our money. And the thing is, it looks like even in schools, some people have taken it and they want to indoctrinate our children to be drunkards. Because in a boarding school, actually, a serious boarding school, how do drugs get in schools? It's a warfare that we need to wake up and pray against us. I say it is not only Christian counseling, but this is a warfare on our generation. And that's why I say it involves families. Let's not think that the families cannot help. Let's not think that the church cannot help. We all can come together. Surround these people with love and show them that it is possible to overcome this and pray with them and pray for them. The motive here is that the Christian warfare, we must be warfare slaves of Christ. Slaves of Christ. He speaks that in, in verse 4. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17 also speaks the same. What we mean here is that in your quest to solve this thing, pray to have a good attitude. I love mothers because um, even when they get their children with drugs, they say, this is my son. Daddy is only takes success when it is. Now, what I want to speak to us is if anyone else is struggling in any of this area, the motive here is to actually humble ourselves and ask ourselves, how do we engage to help them? I know many of you will accuse us even sometimes on our discipline, but we don't discipline even us in a church to chase. It is to restore. How do we bring these people to feel loved? Like my brother who was here, I hope he has not been chased. We wanted him just to sit somewhere. So long as he's composed, we have no problem with him. Are we together? We are concerned about 99 as much as we are concerned about one. We must be able to show a Christian warfare, being slaves of Christ. Every day and say, God, we can overcome this. In fact, one of the other things that comes to my mind, some of our children when they dance here, it's better they dance here than elsewhere. Like these young people that we are hosting 20th on this place. Pastors in this place refuse to give them a space because these young people cannot afford to pay. And it's true they cannot pay. Well, how do we monetize everything? Now, we monetize that until now of our ladies now are making money through sex. And that has become a habitual. When they get married, they cannot be satisfied by one man. The spirit of morality is in them. We must arise and help them come here, ladies and men. We must have engagement that even those children, when they come in our women ministry, we allow them to grow. Let's not try to bash them. They do one mistake, but sit with them. My grandmother loved me so much when um, she passed on when I was, I think, five years or something. When anything fell in my eyes, even a am dudu, my grandmother would hold me close like this. Take my eye. And she could actually look for the something. She could not even use even a stick to remove. She used to use her tongue. That's how she loved me. <laughs> Children cannot approach to us and open to us. My hatred is. And my leaders in this place. And I have said several that you will not be a leader. But we can be in a place that we can help someone. That is the Christian motive of the warfare.
that the church becomes a run place that people would run and they will find refuge. And that is what Paul is speaking in this place. We become slaves of Christ. And when Jesus came, I have not put this in my notes, and he was preaching, and he realized there were many actually um, sinners. You know, the leprosy in the old day, days was also as a result of addictions. That's why they would be brought before the man of God to be cleansed. So if somebody was caught in slavery like that woman who had four husbands, she was actually having what we call the sin of or looking for husband. And Jesus would sit and eat with them. And the teachers of the law asked, how comes he eats with sinners? But Jesus knew that we are not of this world, but we need to change that. The Christian motive of warfare. Do not rely too much on arguments. He says, I will fight for that. Many of us, when we are caught, we want to give excuses. Dawa, yet this bit, is to accept. In fact, they say, accept, admit, and be happy. Many of us try to put so many excuses. Oh, you know, this, any of these addictions can be dealt with because we are in the warfare. Just admit and then you'll be able to do. You do this for 21 days, I say you need to do. Verse 6, what does verse 6 say? Verse 6 talks of community responsibility. Community responsibility by, he says, and we will be ready to punish. Now, we own up. Now, this is where some of us also don't do that. When we are dealing with some of these things, if you are a parent, that's a mom and you are a punish, a feature. It must be togetherness. Now, we must, we, we, we are talking about being firm and loving. We are talking about being firm and truthful. When we engage and we are trying to do this, and that's why I talked about, it's not about church alone. It's not about us removing them from the family. How do I come together, all of us, and show a better way? Some of the people who are, drug, are addictive in terms of drugs, they also have other vices. They can steal. So you realize that we want to actually chase them far away. Let's learn to see how do we help them in the, uh, in the community. There is a community responsibility that all of us has a part to solve. I know when we get somebody who's a drunkard out there, we say, Nanendanga sitam, ah, sema yokanis. It is all of us are responsible. Paul could not idly sit as the enemies of faith assaulted the church under his care. If you are not infected, they are said you are affected. You don't know this? If you are not infected, you are affected. All of us are affected when this happens. All of us are troubled when this happens. Even me, as a pastor, I am affected when I say and hear of this. This is a rampant case of behavior and all across. Our young people cannot read. Ourselves cannot be able to do that. I give you, a, we must be able to take it as a community and see how to help one another in Jesus' name. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 19, verse 20. We must be able to do that as a community. We must deal with the falsehood on what Christ can do. When it regards addiction, you know, Many of us will say, oh, that is how they ask for it. And then it is known. And many of us are accepting that and are working with that lie in our life. Some of us are thinking, ah, it is for fun. You do gaming for fun. You do gambling. You must work with your hands. There is nothing that will just come from heaven and drop to you. Okay. So there is a falsehood that is coming to us in the postmodern trend. And the postmodern trend is the truth is with me. It is not what even the Bible says. Now, ladies are saying that there are few husbands. So they are saying that sharing is caring. That's a lie from the enemy. That is what the enemy is. The, 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 the women conference for the Islam. They are doing an all serene. They are saying sharing is caring. Falsehood. So there is no absolute truth. Now we have also theologians like your pastor here. They are asking themselves and Reverend Patrick who are saying, can we revisit the Bible? The Catholic Church almost declared themselves on the stand that we can actually unite gay parties. Why? They are saying it is common. Falsehood. Now, it goes with drugs. 
and all that we do. God, through Christ, is the Savior. He is the Redeemer. I pray that the Rema word, the one that we proclaim, and the lection word, the word which we read, can be able to make a meaning to us as children of God. I always believe, again, that if we bring our children in the ways of God, they will know what is truth. My uncle didn't go to school, they didn't go to church, but the wife was a treasurer. So they taught us what to do and what not to do. Like for alcohol, they used to tell us, this is for old men. So we were waiting to be old to drink. Nine men's idea. No, no. So we really need to actually come to the place that we actually deal with the falsehood that people have created to us and they put to us that we can be able to take drugs. Some of our young men, they take drugs because when you get circumcised, as I told you, you know, Trust his servants. Paul speaks in verse 7 and verse 8. This one is normally good as an encouragement to us because when I speak this word, men of us, he says in verse 7 and verse 8, you are judging by appearances. If anyone is confident that they belong to Christ, they should consider again that we belong to Christ just as much as they do. So even if I boast somewhat freely about the authority the Lord gave us for building you up rather than tearing it down. I will not be ashamed of it. We must trust the people who are helping you. One of the things I love about doctors is that we trust them. Um, and uh, I thank God for ladies, but let me use for men. You cannot actually be helped by a doctor that cannot help you. Cannot, um, that you don't trust. So I can be to end the door along That's how we trust doctors. Okay? But you guys cannot trust the people that are helping you. You are in the drug rehabilitation. You can't trust the person that you trust yourself. So Paul speaks here and he says that ah, we are not boasting because trust the servants. Trust us when we are leading you. God has given us. I'm not speaking this message because I am I'm excited about it. I don't know why I fell on this. But also when we sat as a leadership, we noticed that the majority of our young people are in addiction. This is the motive of this sharing. And we ask ourselves, are we able to talk it from the pulpit point of view? I ask God, I battle myself. I don't know who those people are. But let me tell you, let's trust the people that are helping us. Otherwise, you cannot help yourself. We cannot help ourselves. Somebody else must. And I pray that you trust the prophets and the apostles on this. Until we receive the messenger, we cannot accept the message. Most wise lives are addicts, are doctors in themselves. I put that sentence. In fact, I'm not surprised with the other case. I was driving somewhere with my wife. And then, because mama was like, I was But he was drunk at so you can imagine <laughs> that the drug addicts sasa alikuwa ananisomea na unajua singemwambia chochote is under influence of drugs even that's how many of us are behaving in our addictions this is the doctor in fact some of you are better doctors you have the solutions than the preacher in your end unakanyaga ukienda nyumbani and you are lost. Paul is saying, trust the person that is helping you. And that will be a blessing. They doubt everybody. Okay. Develop. He speaks about culture. And he says, and this is your action. Develop a habit or a culture of putting away associations and suggestions of evil. Paul speaks that in verse 11, if I'm not wrong. Somewhere, let me check. He says this in verse 11. Such a people should realize that what we are in our letters when we are absent, we will be in our actions when we are present. So there are things you need to actually develop about yourself. Put away some few people. Pole, pole. Okay? Uh, develop a culture of us disassociating with yourself. Some of you need to pray to change location because some of your friends will still buy you alcohol. 
But I took some of Al Busa because of being initiated in circumcision. I took part of it. Ilikuwa tunasaviwa tu kama chai after that day. Naona vile inasaviwa anga tu chai ya berika. Let me do some confession. But Reverend Patrick go jai kunywa. Sisi tulikuwa tunapewa sasa hiyo siku. So the day I got born again, it was December. Na ilikuwa inasaviwa anga jioni. Elda ambua ukujua hii. Hii unashtuka aje namna gani? Sasa when I got born again, na unajua busa wa inanukia, wala anakunyaga busa. <laughs> we will not go back there. So, when I came home and I said I'm born again, one of my cousin served again. Hakaleta kwa, kwa kuna kitu ilikuwa inasabiwa, hakaleta. Yo kitu ikileta arufu, before kunyo ina, ina, <laughs> hakaweka mbele yangu. Na hakaweka mbele, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. I pray for prayer of dissociation. And God took me away from my rural home to Naro. Umungu ni mzuri. Some of us, that's why I'm telling you spiritual warfare. So nilienda uko ni kaishi na angwa yangu, tukona omba jioni, sasa hakuna wakuleta yokitu. Some of us need to pray for change. Ukirealize tu, una struggle. Una struggle. Just pray for change. Na ikikuja ukuja tuwa pastor ni mepewa, change, and it's good. Amen? Because you cannot remain in the same environment. Your friend will buy for you free. There are some of them, utakunywa kidogo, utarealize you have backslidden. So develop a culture that will define your action. And by prayer, I, I think you can go there. Uh, the rest is history. I actually didn't take after I got born again. You know, but learn to do that. Get preterents or counselors. You can share your struggles. Um, when I was sharing this, I remember the man called Nicodemus. Nicodemus was addicted to his own sin. It was behavior of sin. Lakina lienda usiku. Niliwambia ata wachungaji wangu hapa. Si lazima uende kwa pastor. Mini kona pastor wengine na endanga. Awaze mkitu. You can even fly to China. And then go and confess and come back. Elder. Ukiono na struggle kitu naenda kama South Sudan huku. Pile elda wajuba. Wakimadiza. Unambia mimi ni muzewa kanisa huko Kenya. Lakini. Hiko kitu. Buenas fear son. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, this will help you. Unaenda wanakuombea. Sasa unaombea huyo unarudi. Na Mungu amekutakasa. Unaendelea kufanya kazi ya eldership, unaendelea kuimba haleluya. Eh hey, bwana, mnaniangalia na mnaga. Don't incriminate me. The Lord loves us. Amen. We want to help one another. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We used to be told by that by Bishop Ken. Bishop Ken's mentor used to be Bishop Masinde. I tell you, those are two my good, my good fathers of mine. So you go to them. Because we later up our Mbua that could discuss, like meet the next fellowship, Reverend Kiprop, confess to me. But because in counseling, <laughs> there are cases of public good. So said, avoid the public good. You'll be good with the Lord, and he'll be good with you. Amen? Don't die with your addiction, my brother. This is what we are speaking here. We can be slaves of Christ. I'm just giving you some antidote to this. Desire to be in God's presence always. I love Psalm 27 and Psalms 84. And David tried to say, I desire to be in the presence of God. One of the things I tell many people, those who struggle with masturbation, you must fast seven days, dry fasting. There's a brother who is to suffer that. Him really, because masturbation is fed by a lot of sugar. So when you actually starve this body very well, in a kufa. Vizuri, dry fasting, unaenda tu unajifungia, kuna prayer centers, ingine mpaka wanacheki kama umekuja na biscuits. Ukitoka hapo, it is gone. I can tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when you are in the presence of God, some of these things go. God is able to speak to you, and you can put your body to a place that he can. It's another secret that you can be able to do that. Just be in the Lord. Be a slave of Christ. Paul, he says, I beat my body that I become a slave of Christ so that you don't get a place that you are there. Engage God in prayer. It's not far from what I've said to overcome your struggles. Lord's prayer is a good example. Now, you look at it and it says, and forgive my sins, my trespasses. Paul suggests in 2 Corinthians, sorry, um, I have written there, well, first, it is 2 Corinthians. It's not carnal, but spiritual. We can overcome addiction through prayer. I've talked about this brother who got saved, 
and he was able to serve God. You can pray to God every day, constantly, so that we are not having a dying church because of addictions, but a, a resurrecting church out of our demission. I want to conclude and just ask you, please choose your slavery. Choose your slavery. Either you are a slave to Christ, or you are also Choose your slave. It's good to choose your slavery. Amen. Ndugu yangu pale, si bangu uliacha kabisa, sindiyo? Jultua ushu wida bana, fanya yu, nisalumie. Uliacha bangi kabisa, sindiyo? Na unaimba. Ya wata wajuu liko na vuta ikitu. Alitua ushu wida, si muaibishi. Na una naimba vizuri sana. Si mama wakuone, sutaki urudu uko siku ingine bana. Pigieni hundu uku makofi. Amen. He testified during our crusade. It is possible. It's one of the hardest drugs to overcome. In fact, some of you are young people, if they are struggling, talk to him. I love his spirit to speak out. Speaking in a crusade, I can say, I'm doing this so that he does not go there. Are we together? It's a tough love for the son. We desire to be like Christ every day. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We honor you. We pray against every addiction in our lives. Every addiction, be it behavior, be it substance. In the mighty name of Jesus, that you may come upon us and redeem us, O oh God. Some of us, Lord, we may not even know we are addicted to these things. And many of us and all of us could be guilty of this sin. We repent and we pray that we will come to our mind and be able to come and ask for forgiveness. You are our Lord and our Savior. May you forgive us from every struggle of addictions. I want to pray for some of us. Maybe it's your son, maybe it's your daughter. And I'm praying particularly on addictions. No other thing. Behavior or a drugs. And you want uh, us to pray. Just stand up on your feet where you are. You could be representing or you are struggling with any addictions. I just want to pray with you. That God will redeem us. That we will have that of love. It could be your son, it could be your daughter, it could be yourself. Just stand up, we'll pray with you that God will help you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other people? Any other people? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. As we are here, the church is hurting because most of our children, who we have given the best, they have used their money to go and use it for their own things. They are addicted in their own lifestyle. They are addicted in the many things. Today, Lord, we are praying. We repent and we break every thirst of addiction in every of every person that is standing. They are standing not for us to count number, but Lord, as a sign of surrender, that Lord, you can visit them. You can help them, oh Lord, to help their kin, or maybe themselves to overcome any and every addiction in their life. We surrender to you, Master. We pray for us. Some are seated here and they could not stand. Father, I plead and I pray. Forgive us, O oh God, that we may see your presence in us. As a church that is growing to be more like you, O oh God, we will be found in the place of prayer. We will be found at the place of helping and building the nation, not just addicted to things that just excite our bodies and nothing more. I thank you for speaking to me and speaking to your people. And Lord, as we look forward for a redemptive and a saved society, we would give you glory. May you be honored, may you be, uh, be exalted, for we pray this trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Amen.